In this short video, I'm going to talk about detention basins and how you can model detention basins in HydroCAD. In the previous videos of this playlist, we defined a subbasin with a specific area, time of concentration, and we also defined a rainfall design or a design storm for this specific area. And we have different return periods for this area to model. If you have not watched the previous videos, I highly recommend watching them. And the link to the playlist is in the description section of this video. All right. So now we are going to define a detention basin like this. I'm assuming that you know what a detention basin is because you're watching this video. But if you don't know what it is, a detention basin, as its name suggests, is a pond that could be dry or wet. In this photo, I have a dry pond that detains water and eventually releases water uh, from an outlet structure like this. Here I have an orifice and I have a weir as an outlet structure that is located right over here. Detention basins are very common when it comes to parking lots. All right, so to define the detention basin, first of all, you need to survey the detention basin and have the elevation of different different areas of this detention basin. So I'm going to drag a pond over here and then right click on it and click on edit. We are going to define a detention basin. And when you click on detention basin, you can see that the storage and outlets will show. So first thing that we need to do is to define a storage for this detention basin. When you when you double click on this, it will give you a lot of options. Because we have surveyed our detention basin, we're going to click on custom stage data and click OK. Perfect. Now, I highly recommend enter surface area, and I will tell you why, but you have the option of putting, so when you click on surface area, you are going to input elevation and area based on uh, survey, based on the contours that you have. You can also input incremental or cumulative storage as well. I'm going to st stay with surface area, and I'm going to go with elevations that I have surveyed, um, as well as the area that I have calculated. All right, so if you if you have sediments at the bottom of the detention basin, voice is not going to be 100%. Um, also, here embed inside, if this detention basin, uh, detention basin is embedded inside another storage, then you need to include that storage over here. But right now, it's embedded inside nothing. All right, so. Um, if you uncheck this large units, you'll see that the unit for area will change to a square feet instead of acres. I'm going to keep it like that and then click OK. That would be the storage of this detention basin. Now I'm going to define the outlet. I'm going to assume only one structure, a weir over here. So I'm, I'm going to assume that there is no orifice, although you can define an orifice over here as well. But I'm going to assume that you only have a weir. So to define that weir, you're going to double click again, and then I'm going to define a custom weir and click OK. It's not an orifice, so it's just a weir. All right, I'm going to set the invert elevation zero. And when I do that, instead of head over here, I need to put um, elevation and width. So take a look at the header of this column. As I make this zero, the header changes to elevation. Now I need to, need to put the elevation over here. How do I put the elevation? When you click on help over here, it will tell you how to put the elevation for different shapes of orifice and weirs that you have. Specifically, I'm going to start from this E and F and G and H. So D, E, F, G and H uh, to define a trapezoidal weir over here. I'm going to do the same thing. I have the elevation values. Perfect. And this is the weir that I have this designed. Notice that the weir coefficient right now is 2.62 by default, English units. You can always change this based on the specific weir that you have. All right, and this would be our primary structure. I'm going to click OK. And then tailwater, I'm going to assume that this is going to be a free discharge. And in advanced method, if you want to do, um, define base flow, so on and so forth, you can do that. And click OK. All right, so now I have defined my pond and let's actually change this the name of the pond to detention basin one 
and I'm going to connect my sub basin, which is a parking lot, for example, to this uh, detention basin. All right. So, and just to show you, this was the unit. This was the hydrograph from uh, this sub basin. When I have five-year return period, uh, the peak flow is 5.81 CFS. Okay. Now, if I double-click over here, you will see that in addition to the inflow hydrograph i have the hydrograph inside this detention basin as well this is the hydrograph that goes out of the primary structure the weir of detention basin let me actually click on 2d so you can see better you'll see that the amount of flow that goes out of the detention basin because of the structure is very small uh, another thing that you can do i'm going to right click over here go to report items select an elevation this is the elevation of water inside this detention basin. Obviously, after the peak, the elevation is going to rise. And when it hits uh, 1210, which is the elevation of my structure, the elevation of the bottom of the weir, then it is going to go down um, and be 1210 exactly. Okay. So, perfect. This is, and then you get some information about discharge, storage, so on and so forth. And obviously, the summary is very important, and I highly recommend you spend some time on summary and read this information as well. Okay, going back to the hydrograph, and obviously, you can get the table as well to figure out the maximum flow and maximum elevation as well. Okay, um, so this is how you define a detention basin. But now you're going to tell me that this detention basin right now the way that we have defined it there is no infiltration into the soil of this detention basin that's why the elevation after the peak stays the same it assumes that it it has impermeable surface but we know that in reality there is infiltration how do we define that okay let's actually see how that works so notice that right now this elevation stays the same right because it's impervious area now i'm going to right click and edit my outlets so right now we have a custom beer. We need to define another outlet. And that outlet is going to define the infiltration. And if I double click in row two, in HydroCAD, that sort of infiltration is under exfiltration. So if you double click on exfiltration, you have three different options. You can define a constant flow that goes off of the detention basin or a constant velocity, or define the hydraulic conductivity and it uses Darcy equation. Another thing that I want to mention, there are different routing methods. Right now, the, by default, the setting says that the water that is exfiltrated out of the system is going to be discarded. It's not going to be routed anymore. If your water is going to be routed through your primary device or secondary device, you need to select these two. But right now, I don't want to consider this method anymore. I don't want to consider this water anymore because it's going to join the groundwater. Okay. So I'm going to select the conductivity to show you how it works. I'm going to select my hydraulic conductivity to be 0 0.5 inches per hour. And it requires me it requires us to put the groundwater level as well. The invert of my storage was um, 1208. So I'm going to say that groundwater elevation is 1200. And then click OK. You can see that now there is another area or medium for water to skip to to exfiltrate or infiltrate into the soil okay so now that you have this i'm going to click ok and then run this again now you can see that in addition to primary you have the outflow and discarded water as well outflow is the summation of primary and the water that goes out of the primary structure the weir and the water that is discarded through exfiltration so obviously you can see that because we have exfiltration or infiltration into the soil, no water is going to go out of the primary structure because soil is going to take that water. And then the discarded water is right over here given to you. Okay. Now let's take a look at elevation again, elevation of water inside the pond. Obviously, this time, the water level is, and make it 2D, the water level is going down. It doesn't stay on. 1210 it goes down because infiltration and conductivity is a continuous number and it's taking water off of the pond as well so if i continue this um time over here long enough this is going to eventually be zero let's check it out so i'm going to edit 
and actually it's not under edit I'm gonna close it go to calculation settings time span instead of 40 I'm gonna say maybe 100 and see if that would be enough and then double click on this again so 2d and then right click add the elevation you can see that the elevation of water inside the pond eventually at around time 65 uh, hit zero okay and it will give you peak elevation in the pond um, inflow area and storage in the pond as well all right so this was a short video to show you how you can define a detention a very simple detention pond or detention basin and how you can analyze different outlet structures inside that and analyze the amount of water that is stored in it let me know what other types of videos and tutorials you want me to create using hydrocat